Hi fellow ant keepers, and welcome back to the Ant Sabong YouTube channel. As I have said in the previous video, I will do more updates on my OG colonies whenever I can, as I have not been posting any of them for almost 6 months now. So here's another video of my Odontoponera and Trapjaw colony. I figured you guys would like these two species made into one video. I will try to make this one interactive, or rather interesting, than to show you their boring captivity life throughout the video. Let me first show you my Odontoponera colony, one of my last surviving colonies of this species. So this is the Odontoponera denticulata colony, which you may remember from the mite invasion video. That three-part video garnered over 6,000 views on the channel, and, thankfully, they are still here today. They even survived the fire ant nest swarm, which saw many of the workers and brood killed. They took a long time to recover from that tragedy, and now they're back as if nothing ever happened. Of course, the initial workers that survived the ordeal are long gone now, but the mother, the queen of the colony, is one of the toughest ants I have ever seen. She has shown resiliency in the founding stages that I have not seen in any queen I have ever kept. My Odontoponera workers do carry the traits of the queen. They will guard the nest entrance frequently and are very alert all the time. They will hide in the nest for most of the day, but when night comes, there is always high activity in the nest. Their enhanced senses will detect anything out of the ordinary. If they catch a scent in the air or detect anything moving inconsistently in the nest, they will be out to investigate. To make things a little more interesting, I went out to get some wild Odontoponera workers the night before. It is the same location where I first laid my eyes on this queen of mine and the many countless others who have gone to new homes. Those who wanted to know what would happen if additional workers were added from outside of this colony will already have that answer here. Any intruders will be dealt with immediately with great ferocity and aggression. They lurch at the intruder in a heartbeat without even going over to investigate, not even a simple probing of their antenna. Dispatching the intruder is the most important task now before it can do any damage to the colony. Once they are in a deadlock, nothing can pry them apart until the intruders are in pieces. Odontoponera denticulata have quite a painful sting, but they rarely use their stings and seem to reserve them for when they are under a lot of stress and duress. I have slowed down the video so that you can see the stinger of the captured Odontoponera intruder with the drop of venom at the tip of it. The stinger is actually able to extend to quite a length, and you wouldn't want that to pierce through your skin. So as long as you do not hold them with your fingers, you will be fine. They also have a very strong bite, as is evident here just by looking at how they held the intruder down. There is no way that it will be able to escape but to wait for certain death. Not all will participate in the violence, probably already knowing that others have already taken care of the problem. They are solitary hunters that usually only go after insects that are about their size or smaller. They react differently to active prey, and high aggression is shown. So, whenever they capture a prey item, they always bring it back to the nest and never feed in the open. It is very important that you do not overfeed your protein, and I know many of you do not realize that giving more doesn't really help in boosting the numbers up. It may cause more problems than good. Although you will see them carry the food back into the nest, which they will instinctively do, it may go moldy in the nest if they are unfinished. If they do remove it from the nest, then that is good, but sometimes they don't remove it from the nest, and that's where the problem starts. You can tell there is a mold outbreak somewhere inside the nest when there's a heavy woody smell coming out of it, otherwise there is no smell at all. As for their setup, do start them in the smallest container and keep them in there for as long as you can, and they will let you know if they need to expand. My colony has fewer than 50 workers and has been in this setup for years. Odontoponera don't live in bone-dry locations and prefer moist areas, so I wet them every 3 to 5 days. Having a moist setup correlates strongly with having good ventilation. I lined the nest cover with poles on mine, and the lowest setting ceiling fan speed will give a constant breeze in the room. Let us look on for now before we move on to the next colony.
The second OG colony I want to show you is the Odontomachus similimus, or my trapjaw ants. My colony has been steadily progressing and doing very well over this year. The way I set up the nest allows me to check the conditions of their nesting chamber and whether they have a sufficient brood count. At least I will have an early notice, so to speak, to take further actions if anything happens to the colony. It is better than not knowing. Once in a while, I'll use my camera to check on them inside their nest. On the other hand, observing the pupae is a little tricky. They have stuffed one test tube filled with substrate, which doesn't allow me to pierce through with my lenses. I need to spray water in their formicarium to keep them moist. They are doing alright so far, but don't let this fool you, they are quite tricky to keep. They don't readily accept every feeder insect that you offer, and they don't always go for honey or sugar water either. All I can say is that the longer that you manage to keep them and get their numbers up, the more they will gradually be willing to accept everything you give to them. Patience is a virtue. On top of that, they require high levels of humidity and cannot tolerate colder temperatures. They also require some type of substrate in the nest to help with brood development. Anyway, they are capable of dragging a whole mealworm inside their nest and processing it there. If it's a bigger insect like crickets, they cooperate and work together to bring it into the nest. If you end up cutting the insect feeders into pieces like I always do, in no time the feeding plate will be empty. Making feeders easier to eat is one of the keys to having a healthy colony. They work around the clock, patrolling their grounds and will effectively guard the nest entrance from intruders. Trap jaws will bite and sting as well. They will use their stingers just like the Odontoponera would, under stress or duress. If the live insect feeders do not cooperate, they will end up using their stingers to conserve energy to bring down prey quickly. Once a week, I will bring my colony out for a sun bath, to simply put it. Well, just some sun rays beaming into the nest will probably get rid of that stale air and bad moisture that lingers in the nest. Frankly, I am not sure if it does any help, but they seem to like it being under some sunlight. There is no harm in doing so, but it is totally optional. I do this for most of my colonies with substrate nests since they are not kept next to a window. To end the video, I would just like to share just one important point about keeping these two demanding species of ants. One of the common failures of keeping these species is in the nest itself. Some ant nests have a relatively shorter lifespan for Odontoponera or trapjaw ants. They are relatively long-living species, but the wrong nest has no chance of sustaining or keeping them alive. So, the open setup provides a better habitat and is absolutely the best setup for them. Some of you might be too shy, but don't be afraid to use Tupperware or a household plastic container as long as it does the job and keeps the ants happy. After all, ant keeping is a relatively inexpensive hobby, and it should be that way. I would like to provide a more unrestricted view of my nest and its nesting chambers. I kept it simple, and this is the perfect setup for me thus far. I really hoped you liked this updated video and by sharing a few important pointers for keeping them and I wish you all the success. Do leave me a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Goodbye for now. Thank you for watching.